Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station. I'm ready for the event. KRGV TV. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Go ahead, Dina. Houston, this is KRGV TV. I am ready. Do you hear me? KRGV, this is Mike Fossum on the space station. I hear you loud and clear. Good morning, Commander Fossum. It is so good to hear you and see you. It's great to talk to you today, too, Dina. All right, so much to talk about. Uh, tell us about this, your last mission in space. I, I'd prefer to think of it as my latest mission in space. This, this one's a really big adventure. You know, I started off, uh, well, first two space shuttle missions, each about two weeks in duration, helping build the space station. And now I'm living on the space station for almost six months and uh, I'm currently serving as the commander of the International Space Station. It's an awesome responsibility, but it's really a dream come true. What's it been like for you these last six months? You know, in a lot of ways, it's learning to, to adapt to not just visiting space, but to living up here. And there's a lot of adaptation because our bodies were meant, you know, for, for a 1G, for living on the ground to help keep our bones and our muscles healthy, our cardiovascular system healthy. And all of our habits on how we work and do things depends on your ability to take a tool, set it on the workbench, and it stays there. And here, of course, that's not true, and so you have to adapt. You have to learn how to hold everything down, uh, all the spare parts, all the nuts and bolts, uh, as you're working on things, or they won't just fall to the floor because there's no falling to the floor. They will go in all different directions, and then you'll be chasing them down till they wedge in an air filter someplace. I saw you not too long ago at Hess Tech talking to hundreds of students from the Valley, and you showed them some really cool tricks out there. Uh, you showed them what it's like to be uh, in zero gravity. Can you show us some of that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It was great talking to, the, uh, to all the kids at Hess Tech. Hess Tech's a wonderful program. I've been there to speak to it in person. And uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for people to come in and for them, to, the, the, uh, the children, to be exposed to different parts of science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and see that it really is. Th these are exciting fields of study. They explain, through the science and technology, it, it, it explains how our world works. And so any, any kid that's looked up in the sky and wondered, why is it doing that, or looked at a plant, or looked at the, the tides, and, and science helps explain those things, and I, I hope that it helps put the, some of the understanding behind the wonder in, in a kid's eyes as they're looking at the world around them. I know you spend so many hours working throughout the day, but what do you do during your downtime? I think during a downtime, a favorite thing to do is absolutely look out the windows. We have a little cluster of windows on the bottom of the space station that's oriented for a perfect viewing of Earth as we go by. We go over the Earth at over 17,000 miles an hour. It's about five miles a second. So we go around the, the whole globe in just 90 minutes. We see a sunrise and a sunset in 90 minutes. And there's always something to see looking out of the windows. The beautiful oceans, the continents with the mountain ranges and the deserts and the rainforests, the uh, there's, and then when it's night, you really see where people live, where the cities are located with all of the lights. And it's so fascinating to see the patterns of lights going across the United States and how that changes in different parts of the world because they have different ways of, of distributing power or, even, uh, or using uh, energy. So it's, there's always something fascinating to see out the windows. That's definitely the favorite thing to do. I bet it is an awesome sight. Now, this must be a bittersweet moment for you with the ending of the space program. 
Well, what we saw, I, I was here for the last space shuttle mission, and the space shuttle program was wonderfully successful. For 30 years, we've been flying Americans and international partners to space on a fairly routine basis. I, I, indeed, it's hard for most Americans to even remember a time when we weren't flying the space shuttle itself uh, fairly regularly. And so it's, it's a hard thing right now as the space shuttles are are being prepared for their final trip to museums around the country. And it is a, a bittersweet time. It is sad in ways. But th it's not the end of our space program. Uh, I'm up here now, and there's, uh, there's more, uh, another American due to come up in about a month to uh, eventually take my place up here. And so we are, our program has changed. It won't involve flying the space shuttle to and from space. Right now, we're uh, we're, I flew up on a Russian rocket, which uh, for me was an, an amazing experience to, to go through all of that training in Russia, launching out of Baikonur Kazakhstan, a Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan uh, to live and work up here. We'll be landing in, a, in the same Russian uh, uh, capsule spacecraft in the middle of November. I should be home just in time for Thanksgiving. But we're continuing with space. We're not giving up on space. There's a number of different programs right now. A lot of private contractors are working to come up with the ability to deliver cargo to space, which will replace a very, uh, very useful function, necessary function that the space shuttle did very well. And they're also working on derivatives or, or modifications or new spacecraft to launch Americans into space on, a, on an American rocket again. And uh, I'm excited about it. There's a lot. There's still questions on exactly where that's going to go and when, but it's going to happen. We're going to continue to reach out because space is the frontier. How much are you looking forward to coming home? Well, I, I love what I'm doing up here. It's it's been the. Uh, it, challenge of, of a career and a great opportunity for me, but I am looking forward to being home. I actually left home about seven months ago at, to uh, go to Russia to finish the final preparations for my launch. So it's a, it's a long road. A space shuttle mission is about a year from the time you're assigned. You go through your training, you go through the flight, and then you're home. Uh, this one's a long one. Uh, a lot of my training, about 50% about of my training was out of the United States. Uh, Germany, Russia, Japan, Canada. I've, I've been actually globe trotting for the last three years, traveling and training around the globe. So I'm, I am looking forward to being at home, staying put for a little while, and enjoying coffee out of a big coffee mug instead of a foil pack with a big sippy straw on it. Okay, Commander Fossum, we only have about a minute. So do you have a quick message for your mom, who's still here? For students in the Valley, also here, and, um, you know, what would you like them to know? I'd like to say that the Valley is a great place to use for your launch pad to whatever you dream about doing. I grew up in the Valley, and I remember vividly, I was about 12 years old, camping with Boy Scouts on the shores of Falcon Lake, and looking up at the stars way away from the city lights, and feeling like the stars were three-dimensional, that we were really in the middle of them. And of course, we really are in the middle of them. And that ignited a dream in me that, that, that stayed with me all the way through school and through my pro professional career after that, dreaming about maybe someday reaching out to those stars and being a little closer to them so I could feel like I'm really touching them and look out at them. That was my dream. But it doesn't matter what their dream might be. Believe it, work at it, let that drive you and push you to be the best that you can be and to move a little bit in the direction that you want to go every day because there is nothing impossible for any kid from the Valley. All right. Thank you so much, Commander Fossum. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KRGV-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KVEO-TV. Station, this is KVEO-TV. How do you hear me? KVEO-TV, this is Mike Fossum on the International Space Station. I hear you loud and clear. Commander Fossum, hi from McAllen, where I'm not now. We just wanted to ask you, first off, tell us how the South Texas area shaped you. 
you know, actually, in a lot of ways, it shaped me for exactly what I'm doing now because I'm living on an you know, living and working on the International Space Station with an international crew. And growing up in the Valley, you get a sense of what it's like to live in an international environment with a lot of people f with, from different backgrounds. You hear that, you know, you're used to hearing the different languages around you and used to listening to them and beginning to learn some of them. It's been critical for me. I, I wish that our, our, our partners spoke Spanish. I'd be in a lot better shape. But it helped me definitely in learning Russian because I'm used to hearing and communicating in another language and working with people from a different culture and stuff. And so that that became part of it. And I think part of it, too, in the Valley, you have a little bit of a frontier mentality down there and of, of pushing the, the boundaries in a lot of different ways. And I think that that is certainly true for what we do up here. Now, I know as a child you are uh, highly active in Boy Scouts down here in the Valley. Now, that's an organization that promotes curiosity, ingenuity. How much did that childhood experience push you into becoming an astronaut? I cannot personally say enough about the value of the Boy Scouting program. It changed my life. There's no doubt about it. In addition to what you mentioned, one of the big things that it teaches is self-reliance, learning how to take care of yourself and be comfortable. And we teach that in the, in the arena of the outdoors, but it really applies to all of life. It's about citizenship. It's about first aid. It's about taking care of yourself, taking care of your friends, being ready to respond in an emergency. But really, it's the confidence that comes from knowing I can handle this. And a lot of things that I faced through my, uh, you know, education and professional career, I thought back on the days and and as a scout when I was tackling a mountain that was impossibly high for me, over 12,000 feet high, you know, for a kid growing up in the valley, that's, that's an impossible kind of mountain. And I didn't think I'd ever get to the top. But you keep pushing and you help each other along and you find out you can do amazing things that you didn't dream about. Now, it's a risky job being in space, but I know the information and the science you bring back is tremendous. Can you talk about the risk, you know, in learning this valuable information? There is some risk associated with, with traveling in space. There's a big risk associated with a launch when you're harnessing you know, millions of pounds of thrust to uh, push you off the planet and take you from sitting still on a launch pad to nine minutes later being in orbit, literally nine minutes later, you're going over 17,000 miles an hour. And that's one heck of a lot of energy. And there's a, you know, you're a little concerned that this great big explosion is going on behind you that's shoving you off of the planet. Living up here, there's risks associated with being up here, too. There's, there's radiation risk. There's micrometeorite or orbital debris. Hitting the space station is one of the risks we train for. There's the technical risks inside, fires, toxic spills. We train, train, train. We're always working to, on those things and to, to minimize the risk in the design and then to be ready to respond if we need to. Why? Why do we do all this? It's because it's part of exploration. The space station is the world's premier laboratory. We can investigate things here that cannot be investigated in the presence of the gravity field sitting still on Earth. The, the, the solidification of materials, exotic metals, and, and as they are melted in furnaces and then cooled in certain ways. And on the ground, there's currents that arise in the molten metal or materials just from the gravity where the, 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 the hotter stuff rises to the top. Uh, and that causes a mixing. Here you get pure, a very pure crystals out of those uh, kinds of experiments. We're doing flame uh, combustion experiments where you don't have the, the the presence of the convective forces on Earth, when the, the, the uh, uh, air around a flame heats up, it rises. And that's what pulls the camera, or the, uh, the candle uh, flame into a taper. Up here, flames are round, and they tend to be a little dim and orange because you're not getting that infusion of oxygen. And you can study the physics of combustion in a way that you can't do on the ground. And if we could figure out how to make a combustion process, a burner, a heater, just half a percent more effective, we would be saving billions of dollars in energy costs around the globe. That's the kind of things that drive us. That's great. Now, you're not up there alone. You're up there with uh, Sergei Volkov and uh, Sawatashi Furukawa. Talk to me. Be honest. You know, how is it up there with them? Any funny living habits? 
Uh, we all we all bring our own funny living habits because you know to a, to a, a Chinese or to a Japanese guy and a Russian, the you know Americans seem funny and you know vice versa. And so we're really it, we're we're like brothers from around the globe, from different corners of the globe. I really enjoy sitting with them, and, and we sit in the evening. We, we're pretty busy most of the day. We usually get together for a quick lunch, and then in the evening, it, we, we spend an hour or so over dinner, and we talk about things. We talk about our university, our, you know, our growing up experiences, our college experiences, our military experiences, and those kind of things, and it's just fascinating to learn from each other and really uh, to become you know, bonded together because our lives depend on each other. So we're more than just crewmates. We're friends. Right. And, you know, with the ending of the space program, tell me a little bit about, you know, what are the future plans for NASA? Well, NASA's plans for the immediate future for the next 10 years are to continue uh, to uh, staff and maintain the International Space Station. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, a misnomer that the space program has ended. The space shuttle program has ended. That's just one program out of several we've had through the years. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to just wrap our brains around right now because the shuttle program was flying for 30 years. So most of America knows our country as a spacefaring nation, and that means the space shuttle. The space shuttle's program is done. Its mission is complete, and now they're being prepared to go to uh, museums around the country. There's a number of different programs in work right now to develop commercial uh, vehicles, first for cargo, because the space shuttle brought a tremendous amount of cargo up with each flight. So the commercial vehicle is trying to uh, give a cargo cap capability for the space station, and they're working very quickly uh, to uh, go beyond that to carrying humans. So we're going to continue in one of these arenas to continue flying Americans to space. Right now, I flew up on a Russian rocket four months ago, and I'll be returning on the Russian spacecraft uh, just before Thanksgiving. And that's what we'll be using for the next uh, the next few years. But I, it won't be long, I believe, until we have an Amer another American rocket capable of carrying humans to and from space. First to the space station, we're talking about sending humans to an asteroid. I have no doubt there'll be human footprints on uh, back on the moon again and on Mars within our lifetimes. And I can't wait to see it. Well, that's interesting to hear, and I know you, like you said, are coming back on November 22nd. You'll be returning home. What are your thoughts on that? Are you looking forward to it? I am looking forward to being home. I've been gone for four months up here and a couple of months before that for final training and preparation in Russia before launching. So I'm definitely looking forward to being home. I've been training in Russia for the last two Thanksgivings in a row, so I'm I look forward to being home with my whole family at Thanksgiving time. At the same, at the same time, this has been an awesome experience. Uh, I don't feel like today I'm not ready to go. I have a lot of work yet to do, and a lot of things I want to see and accomplish yet up here. But in uh, six weeks, when it's time to go home, I'll be ready. You know, you're definitely a man that goes after his dreams. You know, many times kids start that process, but they don't follow through and continue that pursuit. What advice can you give Valley youth and, and the young adults here in the Valley about following their, following their dreams? Absolutely. I, it's critical to believe that your dreams can come true. And, and, and they can. I grew up in the early days of the space program watching our steps as we moved toward the moon and, and remembered the first moon landing. It was a, the, a few months after that with Boy Scouts, I was camping at Falcon Lake. I remember this night vividly, out away from you know most of the lights. It's a very dark part of the, the valley. And sitting on a hillside out there after the evening campfire and just looking up into the sky until you feel like you're in the middle of the stars. And I really did feel like that. And indeed, the Earth is in the middle of the stars as the Milky Way becomes bright and you can see all these things. And I just dreamed about, you know, what if? Could I really go out there? Could this be possible? And, you know, part of me didn't believe that it was even possible, and a lot of people didn't believe that these kind of things could really happen to some, you know, boy from the valley. But I'll tell you what, that the, those dreams can come true. You have to believe and then work at it. Don't just dream, because dreaming's easy. The hard part comes when you're putting the putting the, the, your shoulder into it and you're pushing. 
working in school, working in the jobs beyond that, to be the best that you can be. And it was, it was not a sure thing that I was going to get here. This was a long road, and I, I had a lot of adventures along the way. I had disappointments along the way. It wasn't a direct path for me, but I believed, and I kept working in that direction. And I enjoyed the ride, too. All of the journey was a great adventure of you know, lots of friends, lots of great career uh, you know, moves and opportunities uh, along the way. And I'm really blessed with a family that has supported me through all of this. And so it's been a, it's been a real blessing and answer to a lot of prayers. And I'm definitely living my dream now. And if I can do it, again, I grew up right there in the valley, just like everybody else. My first paying job was on, uh, literally on an orange picking crew for 25 cents a bushel. Uh, if I can move up from orange picking uh, to the, uh, be the commander of the International Space Station, anybody can do it. Well, Mike, I have to say your story is incredible. I hope you know the Valley supports you. I could see it in the eyes of the teenagers at the Heads Tech Convention two weeks ago. And let's face it, if you can capture the love and interest of teenagers, you can do anything, right? So on that note, thanks again. Good luck and safe travels from KVEO News Center 23. KVEO News Center 23, thanks a bunch. It's been great talking to you today. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, KRGV TV and KVEO TV. Uh, station, we are now re resuming uh, operational audio comm.